We have one wonderful speaker today. Tony is speaking from the Successful Club Series, which is a group of outline presentations put together by Toastmasters International to help clubs address the subject of quality meetings. While this is one of the requirements toward his Advanced Leader Bronze degree, he's also presenting the speech on Toastmasters meeting roles and responsibilities to teach new members about the functions of a meeting while brushing up longtime active members as well. Tony has been active in clubs and organizations since his youth, being a part of the 4-H, FFA, Farmhouse Fraternity at the University of Minnesota, which sounds particularly intriguing, and Toastmasters. The title of his speech is Meeting Roles and Responsibilities. Tony Dahlman. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests. It's, uh, I was out walking, uh, uh, beautiful weather out there. Like I said in my introduction, I'm from Minnesota, so I, I like this weather out there. And I was watching some guys, and they were out in one of those community gardens. Everybody has seen those community gardens out there? Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's uh, as they were going along, it was one of them was digging a hole, and then the other guy was filling in the dirt for that hole. And they kept on doing this over and over and over. And it's like, like, what in the world are they doing? Is this some type of that government waste that we, <laughs> that, that, that myth that we hear about? So I finally decided to go up to them and I asked them, what are you doing? And they said, well, we're doing work. And it's like, well, aren't you sure? It, it sure looks like you're doing something wrong. It's, uh, what's going on here? And they said, well, if something's going wrong. It's Billy's fault. He's not here. And I'm like, What's that have to do with it? It's like, it's Billy's job to put a seed in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's some very valuable lessons here about teamwork. <laughs> that even if everybody is uh, doing uh, their job, if there's one person missing out, that can make everything go wrong. And there's no better place we can learn that than our Toastmasters meetings. There's a lot of functions and roles and responsibilities that we all need to go through. Now today, as as Laura mentioned, I'm speaking from the Successful Club series, and this is a series of speeches that Toastmasters International has put out in an effort to help us function as a club just a little bit better. So I know we have a lot of new members coming in, but I also know we have a lot of members who would also not mind on just brushing up on some of the responsibilities of all of the different things we have during meetings. So we're going to look at two main areas today. We're going to look at uh, some of the roles that need to be covered during meetings, and we're also going to look at some of the responsibilities of some of the officers themselves. But we're going to start out with some of the assigned meeting roles. And as, uh, and as our Toastmaster of the Days knows, there's a lot of them that have, to be, that have to be gone through. And even though we go through them at the beginning of all of our meetings, uh, I'm going to go over all of them right now and just give some tips on some things that we can do as a club to just do them a little bit better. Uh, first, and arguably most important, is Toastmaster, as we call it in our club, Toastmaster of the Day. The Toastmaster is in charge of leading the meeting. They're in charge of uh, reviewing the agenda. So it's, uh, they provide a very important job in the meeting because they provide some very important leadership on uh, what is able to make the uh, club function as a whole. Some other areas that they're supposed to do, they're supposed to talk to all of our speakers and get an introduction going for all of the speeches. A lot of times, uh, we, we don't spend enough time on our introductions and making sure that the Toastmaster of the day is able to properly introduce some of our speakers. So the Toastmaster should get in contact with all the speakers before the meeting and make sure that they have a proper introduction for them. Next area that we're going to look at is Table Topics Master. Now, everybody here is familiar with Table Topics, the one to two minute impromptu speeches. The Table Topics Master is obviously in charge of getting, uh, getting all of those questions organized. Uh, coming up with thoughtful, provoking questions that are going to help the Toastmasters members become better impromptu speakers. The Table Topics Master has a very important role in making sure that everybody is able to participate during a meeting. Because we only have so many roles for speakers, so many roles for evaluators, so Table Topics is a good way to make sure everybody is involved. When they're picking people who are giving table topics during the meeting, they should pick somebody who doesn't have a function or, ha or perhaps only has a minor function during the meeting so that as many people can get involved as possible. Table topics is also a very good way for guests to get involved in the meeting. A procedure that we have done in our meeting is that we have asked guests if they're interested in doing table topics because we don't want to scare them away. But if they're interested, we will allow them to do some table topics. 
but we want to make sure that they actually have just an idea of what table topics is first. So we want to make sure that we have a more experienced member come up and do some do a table topics uh, question first, so that they have a better idea of what is going on. Table topics. The next area is the speakers. The speakers has pretty much one job and it's a very important one. They want to give a good speech so that they can become better communicators and so that the club can become better at learning about communication through listening to their speech. It's a very important job and arguably communications is one of the hallmarks of something we work on in Toastmasters so it's a very important role during the meeting. Next role we're going to look at is the general evaluator. The general evaluator is the chief of the evaluation team during the meeting. They uh, want to make sure that they organize all of the evaluators, the speaker evaluators, which we'll get to in our next role, but make sure that all of the, all of the speakers have an evaluator that can properly evaluate their speech. They also want to make sure that the rest of the evaluation team, which is again some of the roles that we're going to get through uh, farther, that all of these roles are filled and that, uh, that they are able to give all of the functions that they need during the meeting. Our next is the speech evaluators. In Toastmasters, we have two different types of evaluations, and oftentimes we use both during our speeches during the meeting. We have a written evaluation and an oral evaluation. The written evaluation is included in our manual, so it provides an opportunity to get through some of the details and to learn exactly what the speaker is attempting to go through in their speech. They also provide an oral evaluation lasting two to three minutes that the that the speaker can hear along with the rest of the club so that we can learn some of the good things and some of the areas that they need improvement on in their speech. Something also that I don't think our club, something that our club could work on just a little bit more is that the evaluator should get in contact with the speaker before the meeting. Give them uh, opportunity of what are some things that they would like to work on. What are some things that the evaluator should be looking for in the speech. Something that uh, the, that way the evaluator can fill their roles to the best of their ability. Next role is timer. The timer should sit in a conspicuous place in the room with the timing device. And they also want to make sure that they're clear on what uh, type of uh, timing uh, time limits are available for each of the speeches. Because uh, oftentimes the time limits can be very different for the speeches or for the table topics or for the evaluations. You want to set the green at the minimum amount of time for the time limit the red for the, t for the maximum amount of time for the time limit, and yellow for a middle amount of time or about one minute left in the speech. That way, the, speaker will, the speakers will know exactly how much time they have left in their presentation and what exactly they can do. In Toastmasters, it is very important to remain on time as it is in our business and social lives, and that's uh, lessons that we try to instill here in Toastmasters that we can use for the rest of our lives. Our next role is grammarian. Uh, grammarian is probably an underappreciated role in Toastmasters. That it's it's oftentimes it can be very difficult to do, but I still think it is a very important one. In grammar, it's a lot of us use different types of bad grammar, and I'm probably using a lot of bad grammar in this speech. The grammarian should try and pick up on some of those things that we're probably not thinking about in our minds, but point them out so that the speakers can improve themselves and attempt to better themselves. If uh, it is only if these pieces of bad grammar can be pointed out, are we actually able to work on them? And not to be confused with grammarian, we also have the ah counter. This is something that I have always been interested in. Toastmasters is that we're counting the ahs and we're counting the ums. We're counting those filler words of things that should be done during speeches. I think it is very important for the ah counter to have very specific counts and to pay very close attention to all of the speakers during the meeting. I know a lot of times we have awe counters and um counters that say they didn't hear any, and I know that's not true because I heard several of them throughout the meeting. So I think it's very important that the awe counter maintain very careful attention on the ahs and ums that are happening during the meeting so that they can be eliminated whenever possible. Something that we have in our meeting is listener and some previous Toastmasters clubs I've been to, it's, this role has also been called the quiz master. But the listener is an attempt to increase our listening skills. And they listen to all the speeches, they listen to all the table topics, and they can even listen to the evaluations. And they're meant to test our memory to make sure that we have been paying attention towards everything that is done during the meeting. And then at the end, they ask uh, anywhere from one to two to four to five questions 
just to make sure that we've been listening and that we've been paying attention during all, all of our speeches. The ballot counter counts all of the ballots during the meeting and that they will uh, count all of the, for the three things that we vote on, the best speaker, best table topics, and best evaluator. Uh, they will pass it around in these envelopes and they, we want to make sure that the ballot counters are able to do a good job in uh, getting all of those ballots, getting them counted quickly, and then pass on the results to the president who will announce at the end of the meeting. And last and not least is our joke master. Joke master is a nice, easy way that you can practice public speaking in the meeting without necessarily having to go through all the work of having to prepare an entire speech. It's, uh, it's, it seems like in our club, joke master is one of the last roles to get filled, but I would encourage us to put a renewed effort on joke master so that we can have people practicing public speaking through the very fun way of telling a joke <laughs> in order to start off our meetings. So now that we have gone through the assigned meeting roles, we're going to shift gears a little bit and we're going to talk about what are some of the roles of some of the club officers during the meeting. And we, we have a very good officer team here and I know they all do a good job of figuring out what they need to do. The role of the sergeant at arms, they want to make sure that the room is all set up, that the room is secured, that our banner is in place, that our easel is in place, and they also start off and adjourn the meeting. So that's a very important role for the sergeant at arms. The president sets the tone for the meeting and they also make sure that all the announcements are shown at the beginning and the end. The vice president of education is in charge of the educational aspects of our meeting. They want to make sure that all of our speaker roles and that all the rest of the meeting role functionaries are filled. Uh, Vice President of Public Relations is in charge of making sure that uh, there's publicity out there for our meeting, that uh, we're able to uh, tell the uh, members of our club, members of our area and district, as well as members of the general public, information that may be pertinent for Tulsa Masters. The Vice President of Membership is in charge of trying to get new members into our club get them, uh, 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 is, uh, acts as the chairman of any recruitment efforts that we would have for our club in an effort to rejuvenate our membership as, our, as we go along. The secretary is in charge of keeping minutes of the meeting and keeping a record of the meeting. And this can vary by club. I've seen it done in many different ways. But I would like to see our club actually have a record of, of what goes on during our meetings in terms of speakers and evaluators and table topics and that we have that on record and that it's distributed amongst the entire club so that even if you're not able to go to a meeting, you can still be sure about what is going on. And finally, as the treasurer, they are in charge of collecting dues during the meeting and to make sure that our club finances are in shape. So today, we have looked at two different areas. We have looked at some of the role function areas that are happening during the meeting. And we have also looked at some of the duties of the club officers. And in, the, and in the end, we can see that teamwork is essential to the success of Toastmasters Clubs and its members. And when all of the members understand their roles and responsibility, that is the way that we will have the most successful club. I will conclude my speech with a quote by Henry Ford, the famous American entrepreneur, coming together as a beginning, keeping together as a progress, and working together is success. Let's all work together as a team and become a more successful club. Thank you.